Okay, so you know that I have DNA and CAT scans and all that stuff. Now, this is Mary Schweitzer. This goes back 12 years ago. She was on 60 Minutes on TV presenting her evidence about soft tissues and DNA in dinosaurs. Now, at this time, she didn't have any DNA tests done, I don't believe. But she could. She used acid to dissolve all the mineral stuff, and she was all flexible. It really, it was fascia. That's what she was, like all that gooey stuff, that's fascia. And so I started looking into fascia. But anyway, it, she, she was attacked, totally attacked. And um, she did the dinosaur tissue, Mary Schweitzer, this is just five months ago she uploaded that. I guess she's coming back on the scene, but she was literally, you know, she, you can say anything you want, but as far as I'm concerned, they destroyed her for, for coming up with this evidence. And she's trying to figure it out as a scientist, just like I do. But it, they, they really gave her a very, 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 very hard time. And, um, you know, see, this, this was a good, it's like 12 years ago. So this is when I got started. Now I'm going to show you another video from about 12 years ago, which is called The Fuzz. And that's what she had was, it's, it's The Fuzz. I'll show you. Oh, by the way, I think I might have mentioned this, but I'm going to change this to that brain. <laughs> this, when you go up and you see Mud Fossil University, you see this logo. Nobody really cares for that logo. So I'm going to make a brain. I'm going to put a brain there instead, something like that. Well, it's going to be the brain. Let's go with the brain. So remember that. If you come up and you're looking for my logo, it's not going to be there anymore. I'm changing it. All right, this is how it started. I saw Mary Schweitzer on 60 Minutes, and this was the interview. You guys might want to watch this. What happened next happened by mistake. Mary put some fragments of the bone in acid to dissolve away the outermost layer of mineral. But the acid worked too fast, and all the mineral dissolved away. Being a fossil, there should have been nothing left. But there was, and it was elastic, like living tissue. This is the piece. <gasps> no. She showed us video she took under the microscope. That's really what happened? Yes. That's the dinosaur yeah. bone? Without mineral now. That's what was left. It looked like the soft tissue she would have expected to find if it had been modern bone. This was impossible. This bone was 68 million years old. So you All right, what I'm going to say is what she was looking at is basically fascia. It's a webbing that coats everything, just like the fascia that's on this lung. I could do the same thing. I have acids and salts here, and I actually I'm doing an experiment right now with a bone. Here, hold on a second. This bone right here, and I've already found some interesting stuff in less than 48 hours. It's in it's in solid salts now. Look, look at that. Look already. Look, 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 look. It's and these things fell out. I don't know what the hell they are. Those little bit, bits and pieces of white things, and it's, they look like like uh, like rice and they came right out of this attachment here however that was sitting in here I can't remember now where was it down this end I think it was down this end and again I think this is just a, yeah it was like something like that anyway this is just a chicken bone or I don't know what kind of bone it was I had cut it long 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 ago and I did some experiments with with electricity and all kinds of things just because I, I had no idea what I'm doing I was, I was totally lost I was trying to figure out how did that happen what did it what, what is the chemistry what's the biology so then she and she got attacked something terrible but now remember this this was 12 years ago this well this is a, December 2010 I saw this on TV so I tried to get a hold of her and she didn't want to get interested. You know, I'm so far off the mark because I'm showing giants. Now she's just trying to show soft tissue and she's getting destroyed. Alright, so again, I've, I've had these mud fossils. I've been looking at them thinking, what the hell is going on? How could these things have preserved the way it did? It just turned basically into rocks, but they're body parts. I was absolutely certain of what I had. So I realized it was from the fascia, the coating, which was that gooey stuff, and the collagens and so forth. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, they're talking right here about, this is about Mary Schweitzer one, uh, the dinosaur project. And this was just five months ago. 
and uh, this she is, was working with some guy in, in about collagens in the fossils and the collagens are the membranes the membranes protect you that's why things can't invade you they separate body parts just like this completely separated from the rest of your body okay this was put up like eight years ago by somebody called Bob Enyart and this is about Mary Schweitzer and this is how they responded to her finding this fascia well, now listen to this Not even a million years let alone 68 million Mary, Jack, and their team published their B-Rex findings in a series of papers in the journal Science and were promptly attacked. Critics said their samples might have been contaminated or that the supposed blood vessels were actually something called biofilm, a type of slime. But as Mary showed us, she's been able to replicate her findings. These are pieces of an even older dinosaur, a well-preserved 80-million-year-old duckbill. When she dissolved it away in acid... Let's put this under the scope here. Well, look. Is that a blood vessel? This is a blood vessel. You see the branches right there? And look at all of them. And it's so consistent over it. Okay, I agree that she's seeing blood vessels and she's seeing fascia. What it is, is that tubing is of an extremely dense collagen. Well, it's, it is dense-ish. It depends on where it is in the body. And the tubes that run for your blood vessels and so forth, that's, that stuff is like a rubber hose. So it's, it just doesn't, nothing happens to it. And the same thing with the fascia. The fascia protects what it coats. And that's why they come out like this. And that's from the Great Flood. Now, she's talking about 80 million year old this and 100 million year old that. No, absolutely not. This happened all very recently. And all of my stuff, I just picked up off the ground. And you could pick them up off all day long. All day long, they're everywhere. And, they, and they're not buried. So <laughs> think about it. All right, so now she was attacked, I mean, like crazy. And I saw something not long ago about her, so I don't care what they think about me and blah, 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 blah. And the guy that was working with her, uh, I think his name was Mark Armitage, he got fired. And he sued, and I think he, he won the lawsuit because they just dismissed him for saying these things, you know, even though it's true. It doesn't matter if it's true or not anymore. If they don't like what you say, you're done. All right, so anyway, here she is finishing up about her non acceptance and while some of her critics have been swayed, the controversy still rages, and the stakes are high. If blood vessels can survive 80 million years, what about DNA? Well, my stuff is DNA tested, so I can tell you it will survive easily, and it's not 80 million years. It's nowhere near 80 million years. You have to read Velikovsky's account of what happened to the Earth and why all of these mud fossils are flat on one side. Because they died in a great salt water flood with heavy amounts of silicates. And guess who agrees with my research that I presented to Yale? They agree with my research. And they put a paper out after I finally published a book saying, we're just being deceived. Uh, about a year later, they put out a paper saying, yes, exceptional preservation of soft body creatures. And then they say it was a worldwide global flood, very fast, encased things. They could have turned into stone within hours. That's their paper. All right, and I worked with the guy that was one of the authors of the paper. All right, so, so don't forget, Mary Schweitzer, she really got attacked. And critics assert that what Schweitzer really found is contamination samples, not a breakthrough, da 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 da, da. And this is, uh, they're still talking about this. This is from June 2023. Now, I worked with another guy here, and I'm not saying anybody accepts what I'm saying. I'm saying that I asked for information, I was helped by these people, and I want to point them out because I originally didn't talk too much about them because they would be attacked too. And now it's at the point that nobody can deny the things that I'm showing unless you, you really just want to be a denialist. And that is academia. And as far as I'm considered, it is not just, it's systemic. Now, this goes back to 14 years ago. And when I found all this fascia in my mud fossils, I knew what it was. This is the coating of the lung. It's called pleura. And what is, I'm going to show you something else. What you see, what you see, well, I've shown this, but you'll see another one. All right. I have body parts, feet and fingers and toes and lungs and hearts and everything in every state of decomposition. This one here is absolutely flawless. 
That's the fascia, and that's all that fabric. If I put acid on that, you'd only get that gummy stuff, and it's gummy. And when I talk about gummy, I'm going to show you how gummy that is. This one, it was in another condition. Some, for some reason, all that stuff was removed, and it got right down to the actual alveoli tissue, which is down here, this stuff here. And that's what the, all these little round circles are here, are these. Now this part was down in the mud and the blood just laid in there. And mud is, is just nothing more than eroded flesh. So it just thought it was in a, a good place. And it, from these little red spots came out these blood, blood just leaked out of there. I didn't take that out of there. I didn't do anything to re extract that, it just came out. And this one here is, is absolutely saturated with blood which I drilled a hole in this one too, down inside, get some blood out of there. And this came out basically raw blood. They said it was excellent quality. And so was the, some of my giant ones too. Now, and so I got DNA. So there's no question you can get DNA. And they got, everybody's getting DNA now. And it's a whole new thing, but they just so slow at, at the uptake of this, it's incredible. When I say I have them in every state, remember I say this is thick? That's how thick it is. This is another mud fossil. It's a lung, and it has that strap right there, just like this does, that holds it in position, and it has another little tab right at the top that holds it so that it doesn't flop around in your body, and that's the rubber bag. That is the rubber bag that surrounds that, so it can go all day long. All right, and it's flat as a pancake again. Why? Why would that happen? Why is it disassociated from the body, first of all? I can tell you why. It's because of a hot salt water flood. And when I say that, these were, these were all drowned, basically, in a gigantic, terrible catastrophe where Venus almost hit Earth. This is all recorded by Velikovsky. If you don't do your research, then you're just wasting your time. You just listen to somebody tell you something that has no meaning. I'm showing you things that have no way to be dismissed. And this is a lung that was completely evacuated for some other reason. These are things I want to investigate. I'd I, I like to know why. Why did this thing get totally, all of this go, and even down, had nothing left here. This one filled up with silicates. This didn't fill up with silicates. Why? This is the basic structure of the lung. That's sort of, a, if, when it was alive, this is the stuff that Mary Schweitzer was pulling around, primarily. And all the rest of them are holes where, where the air goes in. Well, that's a bone turned to stone. And inside, turns to like basalts and stuff. It depends on what kind of mineral, metals and minerals are present in that bone. And you can take the same bone, and if it's this way, all of that stuff will drain down to this end and it will be it, it very heavy in those kind of basalts or whatever it turns into. And if it's turning the other way around, the stuff goes down on this side and it gets all the metals and minerals. And I can prove that too, because if I, I've show, I can show you veins of quartz, and quartz is what fills in like this. It fills in the holes. This is quartz. That's C, um, SiO2, silicon dioxide, quartz. And, it's, it, it, and they know this, or even Yale said it was heavy silicates, and the heavy silicates come from the skin of the creatures that were boiled, because they have 50 times more silicates in the skin. So there's 50 times more silicon roaming around in the waters, and they invades and attaches to biology for some reason i can't tell you why but it fills up all the voids and then it turns into quartz they say veins of quartz yes and there's blood in those veins of course and there's also gold in those veins of quartz all right let me explain to you about the fascia and about the coating that surrounds all of your vital tissue you see that little strip around that's running around there you should be able to see that you see it? You see it? It's everywhere. This is the vital tissue down in here. So that protects you from getting infected. And this is where there's some artery blood right there, that red. Now, what we're looking at here is from a mud fossil that they cut it off the top here. So you're missing some of this. So they're right down lower in the fascia, but they're still in the fascia area where, see this is the vital flesh down here, see it? Let me just home in on that so you don't miss this. This is important to understand the details. They just don't look at the details. They don't care about the details. That's what I found. 
you see this reddish stuff down in here and this blackish stuff? That's exactly what you see here, this reddish stuff and this blackish stuff. That's the inside of the body tissue of the creature. This is basically the exact same thing. Now, because this was a much bigger creature, and it died and all the blood ran down to that section. So it must have been like this and all the blood would run down into here. That means the metals run down. And what are, what's the heaviest metals? It's basically gold. So that ran down like this. And there's the blood that pushed it down. This is an artery. These are veins. The black ones are veins. I mean, the ones that, well, it's hard to say. I can't make that statement. I'm sorry, that was wrong. The, the voided ones, they can just as well be arteries as veins. In this case, this was absolutely definitely an artery. That's where the red blood is, and that's where the, the gold pushed right down through the red blood because it had to be sitting in this direction down here. And the heavy stuff goes south, and there it is. You know, I, I've been making statements all the time about caves and all that stuff being digestive systems and arteries and veins. Well, let me show you something. You should knock your socks off. Blue is the vein blood. Red is the arterial blood. This is, is a, a different chemistry, a different molecular structure, and it, it stays sort of soft and red. And this turns hard and, and mostly turns black. Now watch this. <laughs> it is right there. There's the vein. It turned black. And here's the, the artery right here. There's the artery. Look, at these people are standing there looking at it. I think this is inside maybe of a heart or something. Or somewhere, it's a body cavity that evacuated out. I don't know what it was. But these were the, the blood vessels that came into service it with blood. Just what, what happens to body tissue, you have to service it with blood. Now, this could be looked at and try to understand. This is like, I understand this, these are valve features. I, I would assume this is probably coming into a heart. It's certainly coming into an organ of some sort. All right, here's three different styles of stones, and they all have veins and arteries. That's the vein, and the, the tubing stays nice and solid in that. This is the artery, and the arteries flush right out, and there's holes on the side of that thing where the blood just blew out. These two are from a different style of stone. This is mudstone. That is probably what you call basalt. And this one here is uh, marl, they might call that. There's the black vein in this one. It's as solid as it can be. And the, the artery is sort of openish and has absorbed some, some um, silicon dioxide, the quartz. And this one hasn't really absorbed, yeah, some of it. Anyway, there, if you know what to look for, you can find these, these, you know, signatures that tell you what kind of a stone it was. And it, you can even tell the body parts in most cases. If, because normally they will separate on their own body part fashion. You know, I broke these things apart to get into them, but they, they would come out as like regular body parts. Now, to, to look at them, they're disfigured, yes, but there's some way of looking at them where you can figure out what was going on in most cases. And I'm only showing you the ones that are good, because I got so many, I could just go on for weeks and months, because I have. <laughs> I've, done, I've done this for a much, much long time, and, um, and there's things, I understand what that is too, most people won't understand what that is. All right, and, but these things were from giant, giant creatures, and there's all kinds of different processes to stabilize. It's stability, stability of these biological molecules. Biology is 100% continuously changing. Virtually every cell in your body is changing. In a minute, it'll be different than it was a minute ago. No no question about it. You're taking in nutrients, you're giving up oxygen, you're taking in oxygen, giving up carbon dioxide, you're moving out the waste, you're bringing in the good stuff. It's a continue. every single molecule in your body, every single cell, 100%. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process of being in this solution and having these membranes, and the membrane still does its job because it's still 
you know, it's still functioning, basically. And they get invaded through the membranes, but the membranes hold up. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot to learn here. It's, it's not something to turn away from. That's my point. Okay, so like I said, I held back on putting out anybody's name that helped me. Now, th to say they helped me does, has nothing to do with their opinion of what I'm doing. I asked for assistance of, in their area of expertise. And some of them were so gracious, like Jesse Garant, and so fabulous that it was absolutely incredible. I can never speak, I, I can't give enough words to give enough credit to, to Jesse and Fabio and all the people that helped doing my CAT scanning and x-rays, 2D, 3D, they did all that stuff, seven CAT scans, and they didn't even charge me. They were interested. And they, that's all. They never said, not one of them said a word, I'm right or wrong. And nobody, none of, none of the people I worked with has really ever commented on the validity of what I'm saying. And I don't know whether that's because they don't believe me or they believe me, but there's nothing for them to say or, or they don't want to say anything because they're afraid of getting attacked. I didn't use their names a lot for years and years because of the, the attack I got. And, you know, I'm not even in the academic community, so they really couldn't hurt me. But these people were, and I, I think they were aware of their jeopardy, and which I fully understand. No question whatsoever. I was, you know, for them to step up and help me w was unbelievable because I, nobody else would, and they still won't now. You know, I don't know if Jesse will. I hope he will. And I don't know if the Helix Biolabs will. I hope he will as, as experts in their field. This is a whole new area of discovery. This is not a joke. This is not silly. This is not, you know, some guy spouting about crazy things. I'm showing things that cannot be dismissed without investigation. Then if you can investigate and say I'm wrong, out I'll go. All right, this is one of the top guys I know. Well, he is the top guy I know as far as knowing about the human body. And I went up and I started searching. Who knows about fascia? And nobody knew it. Nobody had any idea about it. They were just totally lost. Fascia. And he, even him, he says, well, they just call it fuzz. It's called fuzz. And this is 14 years ago. So I'm right in the middle of where Mary Schweitzer's being assaulted. And he, she's all this stretching, fascia, the stretching. And they called it fuzz. So I worked with him for a couple of years. And again, he never once, he's never said you're right, those are giants, nothing like that. He just says, here's what fascia does, here's how it works, here's the molecules, here. and he's on, a, he's on a tour right now. It's a monster tour. He, does all, he goes all over the world to these fascia conferences because now they realize, this, it, well, they realize it, reconsidering the fuzz. That goes back 11 years ago. So originally, 14 years ago, yeah, it's just goo. That's, and what he told me, I'm, I'm not kidding you, he says, well, it's just sort of padding. I said, what do you mean, padding? I said, I see this in all my mud fossils, and I, I anyway, I discussed, I said, it's got to be more than that, Gil, let's talk about it. So we did, and we discussed it a lot, and and uh, he never said one way or the other. He, he just wanted to be interested in the chemistry and the biology and how it stretches and moves and the tubular structure of it and all that stuff. The, the collagen fibers, the carrigens, where the different fascias are, are tough and weak, and you know what has to happen and where pleura is and how the tubing of the body is basically fascia. Anything that coats something, that coats around something, I consider fascia. All right, this is all fascia that's around here. This is all fascia. And that fascia has been pushed off to that lung. All right, all the stuff that's wrapping this bone, that's fascia too, but it's certainly not this kind of fascia. So you, there's so much to know here, and he was the guy that was as close to this as anybody. So I worked with him, and I still do. As a matter of fact, I, I uh, just got something from him that he's on his big tour. Hold on a second. Yeah, look at this. This is he's on a nerve tour. This guy, if you want to go into sports injuries or biology of any sort, you should hook up with him. Sign up for his courses. He's doing a hundred and eleven city tour. 111 cities he's going to to make his presentations in the United States and Canada to share his unique, uplifting, and informative presentations. He goes all over the world. And here's the fascia tour. 
this tour is fascinating. And that was from back in 2017, because in 2018, they, de they declared this a new human body organ. Nobody was paying any attention to this uh, until, you know, I was looking into it and Gil was looking into it. And then they started to look into it as a system. And it is. It, it, it's, it's a fluid-filled highway. And it is fascinating. This guy is good. Gil Headley. If you want to get in, you should you should hook up with him. I'm telling you right now, these are the guys that are doing their jobs. You see, here it is, right here. Meet your interstitium, a newfound organ. That's all that f fascia fuzz. It says previously researchers had thought these tissue layers dense wall of collagen. It's collagen, but it's, by the time they got it, it was flat because they're doing autopsies. A strong structural protein found in connective tissue. They're correct, that's what it is. However, the new finding reveals that rather than a wall, the tissue is more like an open fluid filled highway. Exactly. And they made this big announcement in 2018. Now, you know, I've been looking at that for years. And, uh, and it is, and it's on everything, and it connects to everything, and I've actually found the actual connections. You see that fascia right there? That's fascia, and that's a flap, and they all had these flaps. Remember I told you about the flap, like just like this, right here. At the end of these investments, to invest into, that keeps this separate from every else thing in your body. On these tips of these flaps, like on that tip right there, there's two little holes. One of them is, is the, I don't know if maybe you could even call this the lymph area, but it's the fluids that fill this, this region, which is your interstitium. And here's what it looks like right here. All right, and anyway, this fluid-filled highway, but here's what it looks like. Oh, that's not it. That's a terrible picture. Oh, never mind. All right, here's another guy I want to point out. We're very, very, very gracious and very skilled. This is, this is, you, can't, you can't deny this guy has credentials. This, his name is Robert Schleif. He's the University of um, Fascia Research Group, the Division of Neuropsychology postdoc. And this is his, his specs, what he does, how, what he did, where he's been. We know what you're doing, buddy. <laughs> He's got. I mean, I'm talking about a guy that has a lot of interaction in this realm. Now, what realm is he in? Fascia. Well, what is to him? Fascia to him. Fascia to him is basically the way I understood it, it was sports injuries, because those get ripped and torn and pulled, and because then you're you're working. These are gummy, gooey substances all over your body. You rip your fascia; it, it's, it's painful, and they pull. You know what? Let me show you something about fascia, which will make it more understandable. Hold on a second. But he understands everything about fascia. Now, most people that treat fascial injuries, I don't think they understand what the fascia really is. Because, well, let me just show you what it really is. All right, see? I even made this, meet interstitium, your new organ. This little flap is what held this piece of meat into the other piece of where it attached to. But there has to be a connection for the, the fluid-filled highways. And it's coming right through here, which is this. Now, you don't see any connection in there. However, if you look with the microscope, you can see a connection. And here it is right up here in the microscope. That's the same rock we're looking at right there. And we're going to be looking at this very tip right down at the end where there's a connection of two little spots, which are the interstitium spots. All right, this one here and this one here. All right, this, is, this looks like a spot, it's not. It's just bloodish stuff, that, which is more veinish color than the red artery. Because this piece of meat is, you, you put it on a plate, you wouldn't even know the difference. Now, there is some different chemistry in the attachment here than here. This is whiter, then this is clearer. Now, and that happens with veins and arteries. They're a little bit different. Now, is this a vein and an artery? I don't know. Is this a one way coming this way and coming back? They appear to be a little different, but I can tell you what, that is the spots that go. Now, I'm gonna just bring this up and try to tune it in. Just, Take it easy, this takes a second to do. All right, 
where are we? All right, there, well, there's, there's those two spots. And that, that whole big flap comes down and latches, just like the one I showed you below. So don't forget, these are the two spots where it's got to be where they're transferring that interstitial fluid, because that's the fluid filled highway. All right, and there it is. It's basically identical to that flap. And I can tell you right now that they don't understand this in anatomy yet. Because I brought this up with other people and discussed this, and they said, well, we've always considered it part of the fascia. It's just sort of a continuation of the fascia. Well, it is, but it has to, it's a completely different chemistry, and I can show you that in the mud fossils. That's the beauty of the mud fossils. You see them as they were and as they transitioned. All right, this is a guy I learned a lot from. And I'm going to go in a little deeper about him, but it's Robert Schleif, and this physiology, structural integrity, sensor motor, facilitation, complementary medicine, human biology. And he was the one that tipped me off to the fact that they could find tattoo ink all over the body in the fashion. And I thought, how did, you know, at that point I didn't know about the fluid filled highway, but I knew that there was nothing but a, a, a thick layer of fluidish looking stuff there. But apparently it just all moves through there on its own accord. And again, he's never made a mention whatsoever. I rarely speak with him at all. Uh, he, but he, he pointed me to that fact, and I told him I was investigating fascia because of its, you know, biological things. And this goes way back. And um, so anyway, um, he's at the University of Ulm in Germany, and very, very gracious to discuss it with me. And again, no decision. He didn't say anything about my work. He just said, yeah, here's what fascia is, here's what it does. And, you know, and that looks like fascia to me, or whatever it was I asked him. These, these guys were really interested. That's the key. I found very few that would do this. Very, very few. And this guy's, uh, you know, his history and his... You know, he's been around. He knows what he's doing. So, you know, that's I like to get people that, you know, are considered to be the experts in their fields. That's fine. That's who, that's who I want to deal with. And he, here he is right there. All right. Again, if you want to know something, Gil is the guy. But here's, here's my take on interstitium and the membranes that surround you, even your skin. If that's skin, and it could very well be, it surrounds your vital flesh. The skin is expendable. You can scratch it and it doesn't get destroyed. It's, you don't bleed a lot. But when you get down into here, you can have some serious problems. And I just got a picture from one of my relatives that was like terrible. She got bit by a cat. And they go way down inside here. And once you get that bacteria down in here, you have to call on all of these these troops that are in here. This is your your immune system. That is right there, the fluid-filled highway. That goes all the way through your whole body. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. And these are the immune cells that house the bacteria and the enzymes that go into that highway to go out and attack whoever's trying to attack you. So down in here, you have all these little interstitium balls. This is a thing they don't understand. So these are also related to sports injuries. Because when you pull that so hard that you're beyond its borders, you're going to rip these balls out of their positions. And what does that mean? Okay, my friends, I got taken away here for a while, so I'm coming back in the middle of things. But I think I recall we were talking about tendons and how they lock into the body and the tendon balls. And I think I showed you the Huntington Beach and all that stuff. Well, there's two, well, I showed you this. Well, I'll show it again just to be sure. These are the walls and they were stuck in the walls and now right here, down here. And this is the mud and that's just some kind of creature's body. I don't, I'm telling you, I just can't explain it. But that is the interstitial. All these balls are all over the earth and literally everywhere. And some of them are small, like these here, the Moki Marbles in Utah and Arizona and all that. That came out of somebody's skin, some giant creature's skin. And this is the fluid-filled highways that run all through your body. And it's this in here. I don't think this is well understood. There's two different types of connective tissues primarily. There's the tendons, which are rope-like. They're tough. They pull bones against other bones, muscles against muscles. They're tough, tough stuff. Then you got the ponderosa. It's a connective tissue as well, but it's delicate and flat sheets. 
All right, so that's the two different things. Tendon versus aponeurosis. Same, same purpose. And aponeurosis allows the body to be strong and stable. Injuries are less common. Well, that's not necessarily true. Injuries are more common, yes, with the t major tendons because those are the really anchors. And these rarely get pulled because they're, they're like flexing rips versus this pulling your muscle against another muscle. This is like ripping the, your, you know, like hitting, getting hit by uh, a football player, something like that would rip your body and move the sheets of the, they enclose your body. That's ripping of this stuff. And let me show you what happens then. Well, forget, this is tendon rip or uh, break. They snap just almost flat as a pancake and you get this wrinkle zone on both sides because it's under tension. It's really all the time. And then there's an abrupt transition where it turns into bone. Now that's, that's the rope-like tendon. That's just one style. And then you go, and that is basically this kind of stuff. But it's all anchored with balls still. And all these little straps come out and they form these, these things just like I showed you on, on um, Achilles tendon. It's just like that. Down in here, there's a billion little balls. Every one of those straps attaches to a ball. And they eventually, and the balls are tough. The tough, they don't go bad. And that's why you find them like places like this. You find them eroded, but everything else erodes, they don't go bad. And here they are here, Moki marbles, all right? And they, they just, a lot of this stuff is floppy and it will erode, but these don't. These are the tough, but tough guys. So we looked at the rope-like rope -like stuff. Well, this is the aponeurosis right here. That's the tendon. That it does the job of a tendon, but it's flat and sheet-like. Now, if you get slammed like this body punch, you can rip that. Yes, because it's delicate. They say it's less prone to injuries, and that's true unless you get get into some kind of a, a, a car crash or something like that, or injured some kind of violent attack against that and it can rip it and here's what happens when it rips all right there it is right there that's the aponeurosis that's connective tissue these are the straps that run down to these balls and there's the ball right there and it was anchored into here and it's been ripped out for whatever reason i can't tell you this is a electron microscope looking at this injury it's an injury. That's an injury. And they, they run just like this in these straight across and lock down inside. And when I show you what these things really are, this is going to knock your socks right off of your little toes. Now, when I started this, I had no idea. I really didn't know much about mythology. I didn't know much about anything, to be honest with you, pertaining to this end result. But eventually, the mythology, this is the New LaRoche Encyclopedia Mythology, Mythology Illustrated Encyclopedia. This is, uh, and this is all right now. This is my, this is my reality right now. And I have a, a, a guy that contacted me, and he's writing books, and here's a bunch of whoa, right here. He's doing books basically on all my papers. And these are, you know, most fossils in geology and the titans of our world and electron dipole flood theory and Atlantis, the draining of the Sahara. I was talking about this in 2015. This is Sahara, uh, the eye of the Sahara. And then he's, he's got a bunch of mud fossils of the world. And then this was about my book on Velikovsky, who was destroyed by academia for trying to think. Now, these are on, uh, and he's got particle theory, and uh, he, he's a giants in history, and, you know, he's got a bunch of them. Now, I know they're not expensive, um, but they're, they're and I, I don't know how expansive they are, because I, my papers were small. So he sort of filled in, I'm sure. And that was, it's very nice of him to do this. I, I have no part in that. So, all I'm just telling you, you can get them on Amazon. And, um, and like I said, I don't think they're expensive at all. You know, because you, you got to get some for them. Obviously, they're sending out a book and doing all this stuff. Now, I have a book on Amazon too. It's called um, Mud Fossils and Velikovsky. Well, hold on a second. Okay, my book is text only. You're not going to get anything you can put on a coffee table. It's 99 cents, just so that I could get people to understand reality. I didn't care about any money, and I still don't care. I don't think I made any money on it at all. I don't know how many copies sold. Who cares? February 2016, I put this out. So that's good. That's seven years ago. And I called it Mud Fossils and Velikovsky Mines. 
in collision because their minds couldn't handle the facts. They can't handle the facts. Their minds are so, it's called menticide. Look, up, look that term up, menticide. And that's what you're going to find out has happened. I got to be honest with you, I got lost here. I think I talked to you about Robert Schleif, the fascia guy from uh, University of Ulm. Very, very nice guy. He alerted me to the fact that the, the tattoo stuff flowed all through the body. They were finding it in fascia here and there just randomly. And I'm pretty sure I talked to you about Gil, fabulous guy, nicest guy you ever want to talk to. Fourteen years ago, I was talking with him about the fuzz, and I, I think I explained it, that they, they just thought it was packing material. And then they were reconsidering that fuzz, what it was. And now it's, it, now it's fascia, and it's fascinating. So this is six years ago. So it's, it's, it's just coming along, they're starting to understand. And he's the guy, I'll tell you, he, he's doing 111 city um, tour this year in the United States and Canada and um, he's if you want to understand the human anatomy this is the guy he's got courses and it's very inexpensive you know he's got like a subscription type of thing and um, and he's, he's just fabulous and he's, he's a delight to watch he's just very nice he's fun and uh, Rachel is wonderful, you know. I, I got to be honest with you. I don't see him a whole lot because I, I'm wrapped up in all my stuff. But boy, he's helped me a lot. And I thank you, Gil. Thank you, buddy. And uh, again, I, I don't. I, I'm not asking you to endorse anything, my friend. I'm just asking for, to answer my questions, which you have done magnificently. Okay, my friends. I, I am going to sort of wrap this up a little. I was going to go forever. But I think I'm going to do a part one, two, three, that type of thing. And what I want to do is ask for you to ask me to answer some questions. And the next video, I will have those answers. But it, up to this point, because I'm going to show you some things that you're going to have some serious questions about. <laughs> That's that thin aponeurosis. And here's the strap coming through. And there's that ball supposed to be anchored to there. And if it was anchored to there, the strap would come back here. And if the delicate film eroded, you would see a strap coming down from a wall into a ball, into that well. And the strap would come up to here. Well, guess what? You ever hear of Utah Arches National Park? There it is right there. That's one of these tendon balls. That's the size of these things. And there was another one here. See that little spot right there? And that one came down probably to this one here. They're all over. They're all over here. Because that's what the, the tendons lock in. These things are all over the earth. When people look at this, oh, that's just an anomaly. No, it's, there's a reason for everything. Now, this is locked in. The other one was ripped out. Remember, the other one was ripped out, and this was here. And it has still had the tendon mat laying here, which was the, because this should be going through a hole in the mat. The mat's gone. So whatever the chemistry was here dissolved the mat, left the strap and the balls. But the fleshy stuff just eroded away. And you see it. You know, the crazy thing is, this must have been that aponeurosis. And the flat sheet has just dissolved and run away just like, like, like erosion, like water running off of mud. It turned into mud. And it's all over here. This is all mud around here. And you still have these balls here and there everywhere. So there was a, it was just a standard piece of aponeurosis. Okay, like I said, I'm going to have you ask me questions. And I, I don't think I showed you the gold. I, maybe I did. I can't remember. But I can explain to you what, what, the source of the gold and how it accumulates and so forth. And... Um, these walls and these things with the bumps and so forth. I can explain all that stuff. And, and I will in the next video. So what you've seen, consider it. And if you have any questions and, you know, any comments, I'm certainly willing. But, you know, I don't do well with people just insulting me. <laughs> I've, had that, I've had so many insults I can't count them. So, you know, I will respond to reasonable inquiries. Remember the fascia? That's fascia. See that? That's the exact same fascia that was on my lung. Only this turned to gold. It's in the chemistry. Something in the chemistry. And I think it's got something to do with the enzymes. 
because enzymes convert things very, very quickly from one substance to another. They're used to convert your food into other things in your body. So that's for enzymes just like that. They do more things in one second than would happen in a hundred years. Or, well, I don't know a hundred years, but years. It would happen. It's a natural chemical process that is, but it, it, with the enzyme, tick, just like that. So I think th this is what happened was there was so much enzymes released in the waters and you know, that's all I can think of. Now check this out. Every time I look at something, I, again and again and again, I find something new to look at. Look at this. If you look at this very carefully, see, bop, 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 those are those interstitial balls. This is the, this up here is the fluid filled highway. And this is the membrane. Down here is your vital flesh. You see the red blood pouring out of it down here? In the middle was the fluid filled highway. And, you know, below, this is the membrane. So a membrane separates the two vital flesh from the surface flesh. And it's, for some reason, the gold accumulated in there. Well, I know why it did, to be honest with you, because this had to be tipped this way. And all of the metals ran down, and the gold takes, well, at least it takes the, the preference. It goes to the bottom if it can. You know, sometimes it'll go this way, and then it'll come back up and go over this way, and then it'll accumulate in the bottom. But it's, it always wants to be at the bottom. Look at this. You look at this, and you know what to look for. You, it's, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. You see this here? That's that fluid-filled highway, and, and this is also the interstitium, that flappy-looking stuff. It's all one big deal going on here. And all those little tiny black balls, you see them? Those are the interstitium balls. All right, so don't forget, the red blood pushes the gold, because it's in the artery, it pushes that down. This is a, it could be a vein or it could be another artery, it doesn't matter. It's filled in with quartz, and quartz will take the place of empty spaces in areas where there's so much extra silicates that they just seem to collect in these voids. And, and there was a ton, a ton, a ton of extra silicates, exactly as Yale admits, exactly what I told them. And I told them exactly why it happened, because of the hot flood and boiled off the flesh of the creatures, it has 50 times more silicates in the skin than inside. So that all was, it, it was a soup. It was a soup. All right, so we're going to go through all this stuff and all these bumps on the walls and all these patterns on the earth and these steps and there's tire tracks from thousands of years ago on the earth. What actually happened here? That's what I want to discover. And I want to know what about God. And I'm telling you right now, God, that's for me absolute certainty. And Jesus Christ himself, and I believe he is literally the son of God. And God is the big God. There was another smaller God who, who took advantage of earth. And, and they could change themselves into anything they want. Mushrooms or fleas or pebbles or constellations or rivers. Ovid wrote all about this. And they changed themselves into, you know, really hot-looking guys to come out and have sex with all the women. They, they, they came down to Mount Olympus, and they hung out there, and they had all these chicks running around and, and having a good time. Just had a party. And they said, well, there's 200 of us, you know, yeah, who cares about God? What's he going to do? Well, it didn't work out well. And, I, and there's a couple scenarios that I have here. It's not one, just one scenario that I'm with. I'm trying to understand. But I can tell you what, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which I believe in my heart, you better start listening. And he said things that nobody else has said. He said the earth is a body and a corpse. That's exactly what he said. And he also said, well, here, let me show you. So now here, this is the Gospel of Thomas, supposedly written by Doubting Thomas who was Jesus' scribe. And he wrote down everything he said during his lifetime. And they asked him these crazy sounding questions, and he gave some crazy sounding answers. But I, I dug through this, not extensively, but enough to see the things that tweaked me. One of them was this. I, I do the light, and there's, there's dark and white. Light is black and white. The, the dark matter is, is part of light. I showed this in electron dipole flood theory. And Jesus said, if they say to you, where did you come from? Say to them, we came from the light. Well, where does the light come from? It's the sun. 
we came from the light, the place where the light came into being on its own accord. Exactly. The sun makes it just come out. It happens because it's scrubbing through the universe, and it comes out of its own accord, and it establishes itself and became manifest through their image. If they say to you, is it you? We say to you, we are its children. We're the children of the light. We are the elect of the living Father. We've been imbued with these biological materials. And you can see them forming double helixes in space. This is just off the charts crazy, but it's, it's something to look into. The Russians did particles in space, and they turned into a double helix. It looks exactly like a double helix. And they freaked out. Anyway. If they ask, what is the sign of your father in you? Say to them, it is movement and it is repose. That means movement of the light is, is movement. And repose means just rest. And those are the two states of light, of energy. It's movement and then it's rest. That's what these particles are. Now listen to this one. This is 56. So first of all, I do the dipole electron flood theory. Now I do the mud fossils. Jesus said, Who has, whoever has come to understand the world has found only a corpse. That's what I'm saying. I don't see, I can't find anything that wasn't alive. I can, there's nothing that was not alive on this earth that I can find. Everything was either eroded from something that was living or is a part of something that was living. He says, whoever has found a corpse is superior to the world. Well, I'll take that. All right, this is the paper I put out when I put out my book about Velikovsky. And uh, it's about fascia. I was calling this fascia facilitated fossilization. Because really, it, it is. It facilitates the fossilization of the internal stuff. But later, I decided it's more because of being impacted in mud. So I went with mud fossils. So I said, if not for fascia, you'd be a bag of gushy mixed organic and metal molecules that would dissolve in the rain. You just fall apart. Fascia is the reason you stay together. It's the springs and strings in connective tissue. It just holds you all together. It makes you not fall apart. Fascia is only recognized as important in the last few years. Nobody's was even looking into it. Germany is in the lead here. That's that guy, Robert Schleif, that's who I thought was, as far as I could find, he was the only one that was doing any serious looking into it. And I think he was looking into it for sports injury purposes. And, you know, and he was interested. I, I didn't spend much time with him. I have to be honest with you. I'd like to have a little more interaction. But, you know, people have lives, you know, <laughs> except me. I, this is all I do, but it's, I like it. So, you know, nobody understands this stuff. Basically, I'm saying everybody looked at me with glazed eyes. All right, so anyways, fascia is the coating on every fiber of your entire cellular structure, 100%. 100% has fascia. In ancient times, it was called tunica, like a cloak around everything. Fascia has a job to do. It protects and separates the tissue, and it does it well during your lifetime. Well, guess what? If you die and are buried quickly and stay wet and compacted in fine mud, that's the key. The fascia does not even know you're dead. It keeps protecting you. The fascia is just there to protect you. It doesn't have, that's why it lasts forever. It doesn't even know you're dead. It's just a rubber bag. It's like one of those things that, you know, that just never goes bad. If, if it's, I'm sure there's got to be some maintenance of it. But you can see it was in that bone. You dissolve everything. There is acid. The stuff's still there. It's just it's stuff gooey. It's just like a rubber bag, you know, some, these new fabrics that they never go bad. You can't get rid of them. All right, anyway, I go on about this, but here's the other part. Skin has 50 times the silicon as other tissues. That's why all the silicon was in the oceans. All right, it was just, a, you know, here, well, here it is right here. Hold on. Here it is right here. Exceptional preservation of soft-bodied creatures promoted by silica, silicon, rich oceans. Oceans because they flooded everywhere. This is a worldwide flood. Worldwide. This is the guy right here, Derek Briggs. I sent him all this stuff for years. He rejected all of it. And then they wrote their paper. I showed you, I had my book out in 2015, my paper in 2015. And, and they put theirs out in the end of 2016, claiming that they figured all this out. And they mimicked basically everything I told them. And they said it could have happened within hours or days. Well, I told them it could have happened overnight, basically. And I think that was, I was making like an exaggeration. but. They put it in there, it could have happened within hours or days. 
All right, I think I showed you most of, this, most of this stuff, but I do want to show you about the ancient construction things that nobody's ever been able to explain. And um, these bumps on these walls and these perfectly fitting patterns that sit together and all these things. So the next video, we're going to be going into that, but I want to have some questions. I want to have some people ask some questions. What, what do you think about this? Does it mean anything to you? What is the meaning to you? It's a, is there anybody that wants to discuss what these ancient texts, you know, the difference? Because I, 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 I haven't looked at all of them. I, I looked at the Muslim ones, the Quran, you know, and, and they talk about Jesus. Jesus was there, but he was supposedly just a guy. He wasn't, he wasn't a, the son of God. I think, he was, I think he was really the son of God. Because these guys could change themselves into anything they want. Zeus was changing himself into a, a hot-looking guy coming down having sex with all the women. That's what they all did. And, and we know there was gigantic dragons. Everything is so far off the charts now that to, to, it, 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 there's nothing that shouldn't be examined. There are things that are very... I don't want to get into on my channel about people saying the earth is flat and stuff like that. It's obviously not flat. You can see it from the space station, but they say there is no space station. And everything out there is all cartoons. Somebody for some reason isn't doing that. I know what I look at. So please, I don't want to turn it into that because that's exactly what happened last time. And, and, uh, and then of course all the porn addicts come up and go after things too. So anyway, I reserve my right to not be, you know, I, I just want to talk about the, the things that I can show and prove. And te we haven't tested too, DNA and CAT scans, everything else. So this is not, this is not a, a joke here whatsoever. And this is our past and our history. And it's not just tales that were told somewhere or could be taken a 10 different ways. This is material evidence. That's my realm. I don't do it. I do. You have to speculate. But then when you just keep coming up and pushing and pushing and pushing, that, is, that just doesn't work anymore for me. You know, if you could show me evidence and we can discuss what the, the material evidence is, that's, a, that's all I want. And I can't do it just if it's every, you have a whole bunch of people whacking me here and there about things that they, they, they don't see. There's nothing they can see there. It's just opinions about something for some reason. You know, it's just, it's hard to go down this road every time. So anyway, I'll just, you, you do what you think's right, I'll do what I think's right. That's probably the best way to leave it. I love you all. And stay tuned, because I'm going to be going through more and more of this. Give me in the comments, ask me some questions. All right, that would be nice. I appreciate you all being here, and I, I learn from you as much, hopefully, as you do from me. I don't know, but we're trying to work this out together. I hope the people are trying. I think are trying, and the people that don't want anything to do with it, they just don't want anything to do with it. And that's exactly what God says too. He said, "They'll see, they'll never see. They'll hear, they'll never hear." Hold on a second. Let me show you that one. Here it is, right here. Matthew 13, 16, or 14. In them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. And people's hearts have grown callous. They hardly hear with their ears. They don't think, they don't care. If they have closed their eyes, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts. You have to take a compassion into everything. And then they would turn, and I would heal them. That's, you know, Jesus' words. But blessed are your ears and your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous men who really, really longed to see what you have been just seeing right now, and they didn't see it and to hear what you hear, and they did not hear it. All right, and it's being just told, don't listen to this and don't talk about it. Because it, it, it all this stuff just fell on me. I have dozens and dozens of these things, and they're, they're da damning on basically teachers. Here's a 2 Peter 2, 3. In their greed, these false teachers will exploit you with tales they have concocted. The long-standing verdict against them remains in force, and their destruction does not sleep. 
You can't talk about Jesus and God and all this stuff in classes and, you know, interject any kind of religion which they claim to, th you know, here's another one. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They're detestable, disobedient, unfit for doing anything good. These are not my words. These are words that are, are serious. And here, here it is right here, 1 Corinthians. Consider the time of your calling. Brothers, consider the time of your calling. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And he chose the lowly and despised things of the world and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. Well, that could be. Anyway, We'll talk again, and I, I got a lot to, to show. This is just a never-ending situation. Here. It's, it's so much, it's just, it's overwhelming. That's why I have to cut this off now, and we'll, we'll come back in again. And if you think I'm doing them too long, just say, no, Roger, make them short. And I'll cut them down if I can. But this, it, 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 there's so much to discuss, and of course I do run my mouth a lot. So I love you, I'll talk to you later. Bye.